and the lanes should be a little difficult for them to get out from. But the moment you get out of these lanes, like this, the Mirana Ultimate, this Solar Flare, plus Wind Ranger, plus Sniper, heroes are gonna melt. I think Lacoste talked about it as well. Like, you have so much burst damage. So it's on Liquid actually to come out to, come out of these lanes really well, have the Storm jumping the Sniper, jumping the Wind Runner. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we've been uh, hearing a lot about Marana and the Solar Flare. It's been uh, pretty strong in the past. We've seen a couple Razors so far, but it's yet to get a win. 0-2 so far. And just not exactly performing the way these teams that are trying to pick it up and use it. Mm -hmm. It's just not like... It's not looking like the Razor we've seen in the past, right? Yeah, I don't even know. Like, this hero for me is, like, is good in sp specific situations but at the moment he's not like my top tier safe laner or off laner even you know i don't see anyone fighting over a razor in pubs and that's pretty much how i gauge if a hero is strong at the moment or not uh there's of course there, there isn't really too many tournaments going on and people are still testing a lot of stuff stuff in right. pubs so uh let, let's see the lane itself like is the reason why they picked it you are playing this razor plus three and uh, there aren't many heroes that can defeat this lane. Yeah, not exactly an easy lane to go up against. And we are taking a look over mid Nisha against Lornoff here. And Lornoff, one of, one of those players that I was really excited about when we were casting him, uh, seeing him on level up. Mm -hmm. I, I was really excited. And, and now to see him on Aurora, he really seems to have found a home where he feels confident and... Oh. I, I just want to see what he does here against Nisha. It's not exactly the easiest matchup, but we'll have to see, especially with the static slide of the storm, if it's going to be too overwhelming for him. Yeah, it's one of... I, I think that's... Actually, you mentioned level up, and I think he was in Serbia. I'm not sure in one of the cities, Belgrade or Novi Sad, and that's how he even got into SCA, because one of these teams was screaming in Serbia. So, um, yeah, a little a bit of a story of his travels you don't necessarily see these cis players get into sca very often um what's happening on the safe lane by the way couldn't name many others that made it from sca or from uh, cis to sca but screen now... i i think he did it like a long time ago oh, on a team outside of screen squad yeah yeah i think i think he did i think he played i think he played in one team in his career that isn't screen squad yeah because the amount of iterations of screen squad i had seen casting jdl back in back in the day is uh many yeah yeah the, uh, a lot of a lot of different players very good tier one players went through that seeing mickey here up against jabs on this kunkka lacoste was in he thinks this hero, Kunkka, is going to have a low win rate. Are, mm -hmm. are you in the same thought process as him? I'm not sure. Like, I've seen... I, I've played a lot of games against him with Kunkka recently, and the hero doesn't necessarily look that weak. Um, this might be a bad uh, representative game, jab, stop lane. Yeah, he might just be dead, but that arrow from Q might save him if they just can't keep up, but... McGain and Senior are still there to get this kill, and they'll get first blood for the side of Team Liquid. I feel like, the, like, like I said, this might be a bad uh, game to just make any conclusions of because it, it's going to be really rough for him. You just don't want to be Kunka in this game. And I, I, I guess what they have to do on top is start creep skipping. Like Q needs to perhaps already think of maybe getting some creep waves behind the tier one tower. Looking for Ollie for a second, but also just trying to keep that Lotus possession in their hands. And Boxy's going to be the one who picks it up. Dark Will was a very popular hero throughout the year and still seeing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole year around, there are not many heroes that hang on through multiple patches the way Dark Will has. Yeah, there were a couple this year, you know, like Pangolier perhaps. I <laughs> literally played through 18 patches in a row. <laughs> no matter what they do to him, the hero has to be broken. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, Dark Willow probably one of those position fours that's um, more or less always in the meta. Like Dark Willow, Hoodwink as well for a really long time. 
Yeah. Uh, we'll see what Boxy can uh, do on the Dark Willow. I do think that there are stronger heroes at the moment on position 4. It's just that a lot of them have been banned out as well. Stupendous. Yeah, definitely finding that a lot of drafts focus position 4s. Uh, a lot of these four heroes are making the difference in a lot of these fights, especially Dark Willow is one of them. Terrorize, Bramble Maze, very difficult to play around, especially in a team that might clump up too much and find themselves in a bad position. Say a good Bramble Maze comes out or they're hit by Terrorize. Gives them the opportunity to have a long duration static link or give the opportunity for Storm Spirit to ball lightning in. There's a lot here that kind of works in tandem together for the side of Team Liquid, but... That, that being said, there's things that can really be put together well for the side of Aurora and their heroes as well. Yeah, for sure. Jabs in trouble again jabs over again. top. Uh, he is getting body blocked here by Insania, but we'll get under the tower so he will survive. Q now needing to run, but has two leap charges if need be. Yeah, one thing that Aurora, sorry, that Liquid do have is a lot of roots when you look at them. That's what you were talking about. Like you have these brambles, you have uh, Insania with his overgrowth as well. Yep. And heroes on the other side that don't necessarily like to play into a lot of roots. At the same time though, not too many reliable stuns. Not too many ways of getting on top of targets and locking them down with a stun. So yeah, we'll see if Aurora can abuse that fact. Yeah, that's a good point, because if you don't have the lockdown to, say, be on top of 23 Savage on this Windrunner, then you could be asking for a lot of trouble and allow him to kind of output that damage, which maybe makes me think that he's the choice one target for 33 and his doom. Yeah, yeah. But, like, if you listen to the panel, like... They really, like, you could read it between the lines if you even had to go between the lines. They thought that Liquid probably have them out drafted. And usually that c goes back to, like, the playmakers. On one side you have this sniper on mid lane, on the other you have Storm. Of course Nisha should have a better time rotating, creating space, right, than a sniper. But, at the same time, I think the real playmaker here should be 23 Savage. Like, you have this Wind Ranger from the safe lane. Like, he should be the one rotating around and making space, creating stuff happen. He does have this Whirlwind facet. It is useful, even versus a Treant, so... Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking he's gonna be the one making all the rotations. Shackle. As Ollie's right in the face of Boxy, they lay down the Brambles, and they've got these shards in front of him. Goes to the Snowball. That connects while Boxy's in the Shadow Realm, and 23 even walking forward to try and land a power shot and maybe get a kill, but doesn't land it, and we'll have to just back off. And you're talking about Sniper, uh, you know, potentially losing this lane over mid, but he, he's 45 and 10 right no, now. No, no. He, he... Like, there's no way he loses the lane. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't mean that he's going to lose the lane by any stretch. It's just about what you do after the lane is done. Uh... Because some heroes naturally like to rotate right and just have it easy because of built-in mobility spells high nukes sniper like you can play him as a playmaker but most of the time this is what you're going for two raid bands you're getting your power threads maybe a dragon lance afterwards you know you want to just sit back and enjoy your farm later on in the game do you really bring the damage all right i hear you i understand you now Taking a look, one Wisdom Rune a piece at the moment, and we have swapped over to the net worth, and it is that Razor. Top of the net worth, Mickey not really dealing with many problems in this lane, especially with the aggression that they put on a Jabs. Jabs, he's the one who's really struggling at the moment. Yeah. What level is he? Not six yet? No. no. There is some. Fourth of the way off. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, minute eight, he's, play, he's played into Razor and Treant. Like, he's finding some farm, finding some XP. Mid lane. And Nisha was taking some damage, but now Ali moving in, looking over to the Dark Willow. They go to the Brambles. Shards to block anybody from coming in, and if it were to be anybody, it would be Nisha with the Ball of Lightning, but you really don't want to go in like that. And all of a sudden, Boxy, despite having the high ground, is the one who loses that fight. And <laughs> yeah, I... his life. Lauren off, man. Like, he is very farmed at this point in the game. He's dealing some damage if you get to him. Like, have you uh, seen the other, by the way, the other facets on Sniper? Like, I've seen a lot of support snipers like, in pretty high-ranked games. Like, 
There, there are a couple of rank 200 sniper spammers on four top lane jabs. Uh, they're looking over as Mickey is going to pop that ult, run down jabs. Ali pulling him in with the snowball. Ornoff's up here. They're going to try and get the kill on Mickey. They'll leap in Star Storm. They'll get the kill out of the Razor. Now they'll look for more. Oh, Ghost man. Ship comes across and they don't even get the kill on a jabs. He was quite low, but ends up surviving with the rotations coming through for the side of Aurora Gaming. So many nice little things happened there. First, it was liquid. Like, I I'm gonna do a Kezu moment here. Like, who the hell uh, fortified their creeps? That was so good because the fortification prevented Kunka from getting six as they're diving him. That's the first thing. And then, of course, the drinking buddy snowball save on the Kunka. And you know, I was talking about the sniper and how he likes to chill back and um, just hit people. That this is perfect for him. They initiate on you, you just you don't have to make a play, you just TP under your tier 1 tower and you hit people. Perfect execution for them, and it wasn't really hard to execute. Now, Lornoff not afraid to take fights. When we saw him with level up, he was playing pucks and everything that just wants to jump in and go. Meanwhile, they are chasing Ollie, and they're not going to go and get this kill onto this tusk, so... Soon, it's going to be Q getting that level 6, having that solar flare available, and... All of a sudden, these right clicks on Anisha making him feel a little bit uncomfortable, but he survives it all. And, and you'll have the Warus Punch as well. So was, he, like, was that three hits, by the way? I'm sorry, B Cop. Was that three hits that brought him to half HP? That's yes, it, it was. <laughs> Warnup's putting in the, the little shots here and there. He knows he may not get the kill, but as long as he's safe, he's going to try and lower the HP a little bit, right? But, okay, now, I've been completely advocating for Liquid and how can they, how they can jump people. But if this sniper is left unchecked, like, it's only Storm yeah. that really does it. Like, your Zoom is buying Midas. Treant isn't really gonna get his Blink Dagger fast. He needs, like, a Shard and then a Blink Dark Willow as well. Razor is usually a hero that's far, uh, far from the sniper, and snipers enjoy playing into Razor. Like, this could be one of those free sniper games. So far, kind of looking like it. I know we're just 11 minutes in, but I, I, I feel what you're saying. He, he's top of the net worth, and it's a lead that is extending quite a bit. And compare him to Nisha, who's kind of there with the Kunkka, right? I'm not yep. exactly looking too good. Not, he tried to make a couple of rotations, they didn't work out. He didn't die, but he, is, he didn't farm during that uh, time, so let's see, what play? Real good read of the map there. Real good read of that situation, TPing away from a lot of these liquid heroes. You don't get their hands onto the Windrunner. They will get their hands onto the tier 1 tower, though, so at least they get a little consolation prize. By the way, can we talk about one item like I, I, sure. I didn't hear the panel mention too much but these are cane boots man like uh, who was it I think it was Jenkins that talked about items that are good in the meta and greaves and stuff and how they make the heroes broken not necessarily the heroes themselves like our canes are built by Lina by Windrunner by almost any popular carry at the moment and they just make your lane so much easier you get them so damn fast after a couple of waves and then suddenly your position five or four whatever can just dominate because he has infinite mana this item is definitely something that needs to be looked into i definitely agree with that because you see a lot of supports to also get arcane boots and then you're just never like, uh, like just the core alone getting the arcane boots like you said is enough i'm, I'm fine with supports it was all is a support or maybe yeah. offline item but the carry buying it that's something is sus <laughs> leave, leave our king boost to us at least you know that make, makes me feel good to give mana but when i'm receiving mana this is it's like, it's even better <laughs> my carry does care oh. big stacks being taken from both teams Okay, he's got this blade mail. He activated that to try and take this stack a little bit quicker. Meanwhile, 23 Savage over here with jabs to try and get the stacks themselves. Warnoff even shows up to take a couple of last hits. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pretty good uh, blade mail game, right? Like you are playing this Razor who isn't necessarily always the tankiest, but, but you, you pick up the blade mail, you have something to deal with 23 Savage, with Sniper's right. damage as well. 
and basically this is the name of the game for liquid what you want is you want these armor items that deal with snipers between rangers so you're gonna get armor or some damage blocking right like you're gonna get blade mail on razor and doom yeah of course crimson guard queued up by 33 33 wanting that crimson we'll see how quickly he gets it meanwhile warren off finishing off a pretty early hurricane pike it's got 21 charges as well this kind of feels like a time maybe aurora want to smoke and mm -hmm. do just that and they kind of grouped up they've got that hurricane pike ready for the sniper if he needs to kind of get out of some harm's way out of some bad positioning and wonder if we see them maybe get a catch onto Mickey, but he's deep inside the dire side in their jungle. Not really much to really look at here in terms of getting a kill with this smoke just yet. The only one yeah. who's potentially showing is 33 down bottom, but he's not an easy kill either. Yeah, he's not super tanky at the moment, but he's still probably the tankiest on Liquid. And this is the kind of an issue that they've got. Like this smoke, if you're smoking with Wind Ranger, I think it's easier to invade the enemy jungle. The enemy side if you smoke with this sniper he's a honeypot like he has so much gold and network you don't really want to go behind enemy lines with the jabs all lightning they're going for jabs ghost ship coming through he does not have any help at the moment and let's see all lightning's away now the tusk there to help has that snowball pulled him in with drinking buddies snowballs away jabs trying to get out hit by the terrorize ends up falling so they will get one but there's warnoff getting a kill and there's your prime target for the doom they'll get it on a warnoff now they've got the electric vortex to pull him in the overgrowth from insania locking in three more of these heroes they should be able to get warnoff they will they'll find themselves q as a third and they'll chase after 23 savage who will win run and try to get away from this but Nisha with his last bit of mana ball lightning forward they've got the vision the chapter shot's not going to be enough and four heroes are dead on the side of aurora gaming just like that liquid they open the yeah. game up and they take advantage of a big move over bottom damn like even if they had some sort of an advantage it's definitely gone right now like team liquid are in a comfortable place in this game and it all comes down to being stretched out too thin like they went all the way to that uh, twin gate and not everyone was there like windrunner was missing like your sniper has to go too deep like there are so many sides from which you can be get attacked there let's say they they take that fight in their triangle where they they can set it up properly it's never it never looks like that never but if your doom can get on top of sniper even without bo even without blink like you're probably in a bad position to start it off with liquid just like that they get themselves a little bit of a lead 3000 net worth ahead Lornoff, he he felt confident he's got that farm he felt himself doing good damage throughout the first 15 minutes of the game but aurora just they ran out of steam you're still a sniper you want to yeah, keep oh, your yeah. high ground you want to use your facet like this ghillie suit you want to keep distance from the enemy heroes i think what baited them the most is the fact that they committed on um kunka right like they committed on jabs a lot so you see that you're thinking okay if they used everything or a lot on kunka we can take this fight but yeah they just got out of position and see how costly doom on sniper is gonna be my, my assumption was just throw it on 23 savage but when you see the sniper like you said that honey pot ready to just take all that honey away and why not throw it on more enough and just get that kill yeah absolutely later on in the game um, different targets uh, yeah. might require doom as well like someone like kunka even might be good or wind ranger but besides doom by the way we talked about blink dagger look at dark Hill. look at boxy like 1400 gold already he's going naked uh blink basically brown boots magic wand straight into blink and i like it because we we talked how they need someone else to jump in with storm and he's gonna be the one uh, trying to find the positioning needed to throw a, a solid terrorize maybe into some brambles 
because that's what kind of started it off, right? The Terrorize ends up getting the last little bit of control that they needed to get jabs. Also hit Warren off. They were able to jump in a little bit further forward to make sure that they can lock onto those kills. So having that Blink Dagger soon enough, which now queued into a Smoke of Deceit, not on the Blink Dagger anymore for Boxy, but we know what he's going for. We'll see uh, when he gets that, how much it's going to affect these fights even more for Aurora. That might make it more difficult for them. They're trying to farm their way towards the top of 23 as well as Lornoff. But it's not so easy. You know, you see Mirana on the lineup. Hey, if you haven't seen a little bit of Dota recently, you're thinking, all right, Moonlight Shadow and go fight. Well, he's got Solar Flare. It's not the same way. Radiance yeah, it, 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 it is in the same way, but it's also really damn good. Like, oh, yeah. uh, Mirana has so much impact, especially now that you've got these two heroes that benefit from that ulti Radiance so much. Like, I've seen a lot of um, this uh, SF plus Mirana as well combos, Dragonite plus Mirana, like these kind of heroes. I mean, they're literally, they just park their truck and they hit you. It's tower, <laughs> tower-esque heroes, and yeah. Sniper is probably Radiance. the best of that. And not as tall as a tower, but hits like one. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's a small tower. <laughs> All right, a little long duration arrow onto the Dark Willow, but no jump. Uh, shoot arrow, hit arrow. Doesn't really matter because this Doom has a pipe, a Crimson Guard. On top of that, he's got Living Armor. Uh, good luck taking that big boy down yeah 33 doing a little bit of his own aurora gaming so bkb for razor that's next on the docket after this manta are they gonna steal steal this like they're good. aware they're aware this is a smoke this might be a good fight for Aurora. They have to be willing to make that jump. They'll go to the Shackle, connects out of the back, out of the tree, and they'll go after this Razor. Mickey with a Blade Mail, though. 23 Savage is going to be dead first. They assassinate. They get the kill on uh, Insania. They'll take out the True Protector. The Terra is going to be throwing that lens out of the Mirana as well as the Kunkka. The Zuma Ball Lightning in. The Doom on to this Lorenoff Sniper. They get the kill there. That's two heroes dead. They didn't even get the Razor after all is said and done. They have the X. They have the Torrent for 33. Like you said, Wizard, he's tanky. The extended shards. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that, that was funny, I guess. I can't do anything. Well. Yeah, he, half of his HP is gone and he managed to get, <laughs> get away. At, did they get the, at least they got the Tormi. Like, the Tormentor goes to Oli, but um, that was such a... Let, let's not say bad fight for Aurora. Let's say just very good execution by Liquid. Storm Spirit jumped the back lines. He prevented them from even hitting the Razor. So it was literally only 23 Savage hitting him. And he was kind of hitting himself because he died from that Blade Mail. The Razor Blade Mail 5 had itemization. Definitely working out. Yeah, it delays the BKB, but who needs it? <laughs> You've got the Blade Mail. Helped him farm, it helped him win that fight. Mickey doesn't even die there. And they will get the kill on the Q. That is over mid. And we're, we're starting to see what you kind of alluded to in the early game, right? Sniper wins the lane, but Nisha is the playmaker, and he's doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's doing a lot of that. And I'm a little worried for uh, Aurora right now because they should be shining in these fights. Right. I really think that this should have been their power spike because they need to fight before the BKBs are up on Liquid. You are playing with a Kunkka offlane. This hero falls off once BKB is hit. And if you look at Liquid, I believe all three cores should be buying them. Now Storm Spirit is queuing up his one. He just needs like 500 gold. Razor, I believe he's got his BKB up lying out to him. Maybe Doom won't get his, but you know, it's, he's unkillable anyway. He doesn't care too much. So, BKB is there now for the Razor, and it feels like with the net worth lead that they have right now, they're kind of free to get this Aegis and then fight on their time. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like once you get this Aegis, you can even start pressuring things. There is one 
aspect of um, Aurora that's really strong, and that's high ground defense, right? Like you, you can hold your high ground pretty damn well with, with the snipers, so we'll see if maybe that's gonna be the play for them, but maybe I'm being too pessimistic. Maybe they can still take these fights head on. It's always tough to go completely through to the high ground against the sniper, so we'll see how they approach it if they want to do so with this ages there's still tier twos though so it's not even thinking high ground just yet oh, smoke up they're going in usually you smoke up when someone takes this rush on um the first one the second one doesn't matter you smoke up and you try to catch one of these stragglers heroes that didn't go back together with the team because while, while you're taking rush what happens your lanes get pushed in so someone needs to fix that you see a carry tp out then you strike and fight they've got the x but again can they get this kill? They'll go to the Terrorize. Yes, they will. No help from the side of Liquid. They let Mickey die. Thought maybe that X is just gonna be a little bit of messing around, but they weren't playing. Yeah, he wasn't able to get out those that Tormentor that Holy got. Those Ice Shards extra deep. Very nice. Never really had a chance for the BKB either, and Holds on to that nine second BKB for what should be the next fight. But a, a really good job there knowing the balance of everything for Aurora, right? Knowing that you've got all five, even if it's just an innocuous arrow into a, an X or X into an arrow, you still have Warnoff who is spitting damage. Yeah, he's still very damn strong. He is farming under vision. And they are collapsing. Look at Storm Spirit. Look at Nisha. All or off. This might be bad. Yeah. They're gonna ball lightning and the jump forward. They've got the root. They'll have the damage. They'll get the kill. They'll leave in Doom jabs afterwards because they have the damage to get the kill to ward off. Shards will keep Liquid away. But it's what we were talking about earlier too. Boxy's got that blink dagger. He's able to make a jump like that. He's the one who really initiates for him yep. and they get a kill onto the sniper yep the brambles perhaps weren't fantastic but yeah you got the job done um the ward was really what's what made all that happen i mean the ward scouted sniper and because they knew exactly where he was they could set up uh, the fight properly doom has been extended though so. Yeah, but it's still tough to fight in even without the Doom being available. They've got a minute and a half to do so. Really a minute 20 once Sniper is back up. They are going to lose this mid-tier 2 tower. See, will he buy another Midas? What do you think? On Doom. I swear this is how the bugs became... began. <laughs> With just that facet? <laughs> yeah. Like it broke Midas. Uh, he's, he's bought and sold his, like, what? Because of this facet, I, I think, like, three, four times already. <laughs> <laughs> Buys it. It's good, it's good it. value. It is, it is, of course. Like, you can use it between items. And then when you get enough gold, just... Need uh, a neutral. Buy a Midas. Sounds a bit ridiculous when you just say it as it is. You need a neutral buy a Midas, you know, just casually. But then you do the the, the trade-in, like we used to do with our physical copies of video games. Hey, how much can I get for this? We'll give you 90% for it. All right, I'll take it. Cash or credit? Radiance yeah, but that didn't exist in Balkans. Uh -oh. You you go to the flea market, you buy like the CD that has. <laughs> 30 different pirated games. <laughs> that's, that's All on one CD? That sounds like a deal. Yeah, yeah, of course. Some of them are in some strange languages, but what can you, you know, you can't choose. Q? Q. Yeah, and Ollie, actually. Q's gonna die here. They'll find Ollie, and now, oh, drinking buddies down to the creeps, but can't escape. Yeah, drinking buddies are amazing, by the way. It's a, it's a pretty cool facet. After that kill, though, they're right back towards top. Look at this. They're right on a 23 Savage. They're going to throw the ghost ship out, but the ball lightning sticking with 23 Savage. He's got the BKB trying to run back to the base with a Whirlwind. They'll get the kill. They'll look over Jabs. They'll pop the Blade Mail, but 33 is going in. Look for the Doom. It was looking at Warnoff, who's trying to defend, but with this Crimson, 
Ace shots are doing no damage to the Doom. He'll take yeah. the Aegis out of the hands of Nisha, but he'll be full health, full mana. And Warnoff, you might even want to be careful about where you stand when he's back up. Instead, he'll ball lightning back towards the tower, and this is going to be a tier three in trouble. Yeah, they just tried fighting without Mirana, without Tusk. Of course, it's not going to go that well for them. And Anisha, he actually just wanted to go in and die. He had this Aegis for 20 more seconds, and that's basically perfect usage of the Aegis. Let's see if Sniper can defend this. Doom is not online. Yeah, the top set of racks. I just... These Reckless are doing no damage to do. Insania? Uh, uh, Insania is taking a lot more damage than the Doom is. Not sure he can match or mirror the positioning of 33 when he's doing that. But now it's a 16,000 net worth lead here for the side of Liquid. And... It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good position to be in if you're a Liquid fan right now. Not so much for Aurora, but Lornoff is having so many issues. Ball lightning, Lornoff. Vortex, Drinking Buddies, pulling him in. They're going to try and get him out, but they've got the kill on Lornoff. He's dead for 60 seconds. They'll buy back. They'll follow it up with a kill on Ollie. They'll take out the Tusk, two dead on the side of Aurora. And back on the docket is the buildings and the objectives. Event. How to Can kill you? anyone? It, it's yeah. like you, you, you have these heroes that are supposed to be buffed up by Solar Flare and they're supposed to be like just destroying um, instantly, eliminating one target, right? But you're playing into a Doom with a bazillion armor, you're playing into a Dark Willow with Shadow Realm, she doesn't care. Insania, yeah. living armor and goes invis, and Storm Spirit, you just don't have enough lockdown for him. So, yeah, it's really difficult position to be in. You know, one team's Top. working with real damage, and the other team's using nerf. And it's nothing, so they're gonna lose 23 Savage. And it's almost a 23,000 net worth lead for Liquid. Uh, is that the goal? Like, Liquid versus 23 is that? <laughs> you just want 23,000 net worth, and then you, you objective complete. You're good. Yeah, yeah. The game default just uh, ends <laughs> right there. I've seen it happen before. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't even see what item really changes things here. Like, all the items that Aurora are buying are these items that are... They're not really items to deal damage or kill someone. They're more of the items that you need to even play the game. Like, uh, Windrunner, Manta, okay, it's not bad on her, she's universal. Not necessarily the item that's the best for her, but you have to have it versus Trian. Sniper BKB as well. And they're looking over at Mickey, but the BKB is going to be popped here by the Razor. Nothing more doing for the side of Aurora. And they thought that maybe they could have got Mickey there. It forced this BKB, but like you said, they're just lacking the damage. Yeah, at this point, if you're Liquid, you have multiple options. You can wait for this Doom and just try to end the game with it. Or you can wait out the Aegis and go for it next. Because this last side is always the most difficult one to take. Let's see, smoke up, 23. I'll search, but nothing showing up. Scan doesn't connect, and it might time where the last fight for Aurora is at the next Roche. It's going to be a very hard one. See ya. Wait, near Dust, they found him. Nikkei even thinking about going in. He doesn't exactly have that BKB for another 30 seconds, but 33 with the Shivas. He'll pop that. They'll slow up Ollie. Ollie on the run. Static Link is there. Ollie pushing him back with a psychic headband, but now the ball ending in from Nisha. They're going to go and find their attention on the 23 Savage. Snug. As they will get that kill out of the Windrunner, go to the back lines, find themselves Q2 gone on the side of Aurora. And Team Liquid, even without the BKB on Mickey, they're just so far ahead where it doesn't quite matter. And Insignia is always happy to take these kind of ganks. Like, he tanks it, but his team, because of that, takes the fight and possibly now gets Mega Creeps as well. Lining all the way across to Warnoff. He is so dead. They'll call GG and Team Liquid with ease have won game number one over Aurora.
Right, it's not... Uh, what was that game? 21? Like, earlier today, it wasn't a stomp that was as hard as...